Hi, everyone. Um, Muneeb here, founder of Stacks. Really excited to be here uh, presenting and talking to all of you. Uh, Stacks is a layer one blockchain that brings uh, smart contracts to Bitcoin. We believe in a Web3 future. Uh, and the real unique thing about our project is that we think that Web3 will happen around Bitcoin. Bitcoin already has more than a trillion dollars of market cap and the most secure decentralized blockchain. And Stacks brings smart contracts to it instead of trying to build a separate ecosystem. And I think a lot of the, the different aspects of Web3 are already happening. Uh, we have seen the excitement around decentralized finance or DeFi or NFTs or other types of new applications. But one thing that, that is going on right now is that these applications are happening in separate ecosystems. A lot of it is happening on Ethereum. It is happening on some new L1 protocols. And we think that there is a huge market to enable these types of applications directly around Bitcoin itself. So this is kind of like the, the landscape of the market. Bitcoin is uh, gaining popularity as a store of value, as sovereign money. Uh, blockchains like Ethereum are gaining a lot of popularity for DeFi, NFTs, and other use cases. And then, and then some really exciting new L1 blockchains are coming up that are kind of like competing for a similar market like Ethereum. Stacks is very different from all of this. At Stacks, our thesis is that it's great to see all the innovation in the different L1s, but there is a huge market opportunity to enable smart contracts and DeFi and NFTs and all of these applications directly around Bitcoin. That makes Stacks a very, very unique approach in the market. And we are very excited about all the technical and scientific breakthroughs that actually led to this. So Bitcoin is actually a great foundation for this future Web3 because we know that it is the most decentralized blockchain, just the way it was launched with mining only and the way the network actually optimizes for independent verification and for decentralization. That decentralization is the core value for the foundation for a new internet. And that's why we decided to bring smart contracts to it instead of trying to build a separate ecosystem. We all know that Bitcoin has been gaining a lot of traction. And one unique thing about Bitcoin is that it's meant to be stable and durable. The base layer of Bitcoin actually doesn't change that much and that's by design. And we use that, we use that property of the underlying Bitcoin ecosystem by bringing smart contracts to it. So Bitcoin does not need to change. We don't need to make any drastic changes to the underlying Bitcoin layer. That is the money layer. And it is a good thing that it's durable, it's, it's stable, it is secure, and we can just have a separate layer, which is the Stacks L1 blockchain that brings the smart contracts to it. And I think in many ways, it actually expands the potential market of Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin has been gaining popularity as a store of value, as digital gold, but with the combination with Stacks, it can actually also become the base for smart contracts. You can have Bitcoin derivatives, you can have Bitcoin-based lending, you can have uh, Bitcoin-based decentralized exchanges and unlock the $1 trillion market that is already available on Bitcoin and, and, and provide this critical missing layer of smart contracts. And this thing has always been kind of like the holy grail in Bitcoin. Like even all the way back to 2012 or 2011, when people were talking about different use cases around Bitcoin, the holy grail has always been, how can you enable smart contracts around Bitcoin? That, is, that was the original reason, frankly, why even Vitalik himself uh, started Ethereum. Initially, he was trying to start smart contracts on Bitcoin and because Bitcoin doesn't change, ended up starting a separate blockchain, Ethereum, and, and started building there. So we are uh, computer scientists, mostly from Princeton University. And this is where the project started as a research project. And we have cracked that critical problem of directly bringing smart contracts to Bitcoin, which we think is a, a big innovation and actually unlocks a pretty big market that wasn't there before. So let me get into some of the components of what the, what the software stack looks like 
with the with the SACS blockchain. The first thing is that uh, we invented a new smart contract programming language. So the reason for doing that is smart contracts are a very different type of a computer program. The main thing that the smart contracts really do is that they're able to hold hundreds of millions of dollars of assets on a computer program. These types of computer programs didn't really exist before, right? So the thing to really optimize for when looking at a smart contract or a smart contract programming language is actually the safety guarantees of the programming language. And the language that we work on called Clarity, it is a decidable language, meaning that even before running the program, developers can know what the program can and cannot do. This is a huge difference. This is almost like night and day uh, compared to something like Solidity that is Turing complete. And over there, uh, you can't really know what your program is going to do until you actually execute it, right? So think of this as with Clarity, you can have formal verification or formal proofs of what your program can and cannot do. And it really optimizes uh, for safety and, and security. And, and anyone in the crypto industry has seen how many different hacks happen in DeFi and smart contracts all the time. Obviously, the Clarity language is not bulletproof. Developers can still write bad code, but what it does is it gives developers really precise tools and it helps them minimize the chances of making, making errors. So the attack vector, the potential attack vector of attacks actually reduces if your language is very helpful, very precise, and it can help you avoid all sorts of different, uh, different problems. The second th unique thing is the consensus mechanism. We call it proof of transfer. You can think of that as an extension of uh, Bitcoin's proof of work. It actually shares a lot of the similar security benefits. Uh, it doesn't have the type of uh, issues that can come up with proof of stake protocols. For example, proof of stake has this issue of, uh, uh, of trusting initial nodes if you're trying to bootstrap, right? People call that weak subjectivity. Uh, proof of transfer doesn't have that problem. Anyone can independently boot up a node and verify that they actually have the correct version of the blockchain. Similarly, just like a Nakamoto consensus, proof of, our proof of transfer based consensus mechanism can actually route around failures as well, uh, which is a property that proof of stake protocols usually wouldn't have. So think of proof of transfer as almost like a more energy efficient version of proof of work and it actually reuses Bitcoin's security. So instead of like burning electricity, we are actually using Bitcoin itself uh, to, uh, to participate in mining. And, and, and this consensus is also unique because it's the first consensus algorithm that actually runs between two blockchains. Usually consensus algorithms run within a single blockchain. And the way we, we designed our system because we wanted to connect to Bitcoin and actually uh, benefit from the security of Bitcoin, this consensus algorithm actually runs on the Bitcoin side and also connects to the stack side. So that's a truly unique system. And the benefits of that are that on the Stacks blockchain, you actually have full visibility into Bitcoin transactions, meaning that someone can do a pure Bitcoin transaction and the smart contracts on the Stacks sides would understand it. They can react to it. They can trigger smart contract logic based on Bitcoin itself. And, and, and that's, a, that's a very unique and powerful feature. And I'll, I'll show how this feature is being used by developers in different applications. And Stacks, the asset, it is a gas asset. Uh, so to pay for execution of smart contracts, you basically pay in, in the Stacks native token. And, and the token itself is, is sort of unique because of its connection to Bitcoin. The holders of the Stacks asset can actually earn a Bitcoin yield. Uh, some people might be familiar with proof of stake protocols where you lock up your assets uh, and you can earn more of the same asset. This is very different from that. There are no slashing conditions. And over here, you're actually earning Bitcoin. So you hold stacks and you participate in consensus to earn Bitcoin. And the yield is around 10% uh, these days. And you can, you can find more information on it. And again, this is very different from the traditional type of proof of stake protocols uh, that you see over there. The blockchain launched in January of this year, and we've already started seeing a bunch of developer tools 
around clarity programming language, around the concept of the Bitcoin yield or other types of mechanisms like authentication, storage, and a full developer stack that people can use to build applications and smart contracts uh, directly around Bitcoin. We're very excited about the ecosystem that is developing. Uh, there are now more than 30 independent uh, entities working, working in this ecosystem. And it's a very truly decentralized type of ecosystem as well. Uh, the, 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 the folks who did the early research actually were very, very uh, careful about decentralization. So the way the network launched in January was that there were independent miners who came in and they operate the network and the mining is permissionless. Anyone can come in and be a miner. Again, it follows the values uh, of the Bitcoin ecosystem. Just like Bitcoin is a very decentralized ecosystem, this smart contract layer for Bitcoin is itself extremely uh, decentralized and anyone can be a miner and anyone can actually come and, and uh, operate a mi mining nodes here. There, there are a ton of applications that are being developed on the ecosystem. They range all the way from uh, decentralized exchanges, automated market makers, uh, NFT marketplaces. And, and, and for these NFTs, they're actually uh, being issued on, on Bitcoin. And they're backed by the security of Bitcoin, which is a very, very uh, unique property. Let me walk you through some of the uh, applications that we are seeing over there. One is uh, the idea of a programmable uh, Bitcoin in the sense that uh, Bitcoin itself on the main BTC chain is not really programmable. Like you could basically just transfer it, but you can't really uh, use it in smart contracts itself. You can't write uh, computer programs or smart contracts logic around it. But if you move Bitcoin, and there are several ways of actually uh, potentially moving Bitcoin uh, to the stack side, there could be some custodial uh, type arrangements, or there could be more trustless ways of moving Bitcoin to stacks. But once you do, now Bitcoin is programmable, like in the sense that uh, you could write smart contracts around it. You could actually put up Bitcoin as collateral uh, for stable coins. You can uh, do lending and so on. And that's a, this is a very, very interesting, very unique property that you get uh, from stacks itself, because this uh, let's say this derived version of a programmable Bitcoin that is now living on the stack side is secured itself by, by Bitcoin, right? Which is a very, very unique thing because it's not some separate ecosystem where this derived asset has actually no link to Bitcoin itself. And you can actually have trading pairs uh, or native swaps between Bitcoin on the main chain and this derived asset as well. So you could actually send a direct Bitcoin transaction and, and do a native swap into a derived uh, Bitcoin asset, use that into smart contracts and then go back uh, to Bitcoin as well. And interestingly, uh, if you don't wanna use the derived Bitcoin on the stack side, you can actually do very interesting things directly with Bitcoin itself because these smart contracts can understand what Bitcoin is. So you can just send a normal Bitcoin transaction and even that can trigger uh, logic in, in smart contracts as well. I mentioned NFTs earlier. Uh, there, the, there are a bunch of kind of like new uh, NFTs coming up, even marketplaces for NFTs. There are certain celebrities that are now uh, issuing NFTs uh, using, using this. And we understand that most of this activity currently happens on Ethereum or some other blockchain. But NFTs on Bitcoin personally are extremely interesting to me. And reason for that is that the, the main reason that NFTs have value is because of the strong ownership uh, there or the provenance of the NFT that you can actually track down, uh, you know, who owned the NFT before, how did, how did it transfer, and you can actually verify the history of, of the NFT and if it's authentic or not, and, and, and what does the history say? And in my view, there is no better record of history than the Bitcoin blockchain itself, right? Like the, the probability that the Bitcoin blockchain is going to be here 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 50 or 100 years from now, is actually a lot more than anything else. It's the most stable, secure chain. And if you're able to mint your NFTs directly in Bitcoin blocks, and you're actually able to secure them with, with, uh, with the security of Bitcoin, that is a huge advantage uh, compared to NFTs that you could, you could mint or secure on, on some other blockchains that might be more experimental, it might be more new and so on. So I think this for me is a, is a very, uh, very interesting property. And uh, developers are, have already kind of like started using that. Obviously the technology is new. 
uh, and 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 people are only beginning to to see it. But I wouldn't be surprised if NFTs on on Bitcoin kind of like uh, become more popular over the years and so on. And there are also interesting things like uh, you can build decentralized domains. Effectively, any any application that you're seeing in the crypto industry now imagine that because of stacks, those types of applications can be built in Bitcoin. And that was something that was simply not possible before this work because Bitcoin didn't have a concept of smart contracts. And I think that's the game changer that happens uh, with, with, with stacks. And we're seeing uh, all sorts of innovation. There are new types of uh, new types of e even like mining, like software-based mining. Uh, for there's a project called Miami Coin uh, uh, where people are doing software mining to launch a new crypto asset for the city of Miami. And, and that's a very unique uh, community-driven type of a project, but because it, it has the inherent link to Bitcoin, some of these assets themselves can actually earn a Bitcoin yield and it just unlocks innovation around Bitcoin. And that is the most exciting thing that I find about, about the work that, that's happening in this ecosystem. And Hero, uh, uh, my company, is a developer tooling company. We're one of you know, 30 plus entities in this ecosystem. We specialize in building developer tools around the main blockchain and making life easy for developers. That's the mission of my company. And uh, you can think of us as almost like you know, a stripe for Web3, right? We build developer tools and we make it really easy for developers to interact with Bitcoin, with smart contracts for Bitcoin, with the Stacks blockchain and build all sorts of applications uh, on, on top. So this ecosystem, as I mentioned earlier, uh, really started at Princeton University where I did my PhD as well. There are a couple of professors uh, from Princeton and other researchers from Stanford, MIT, and so on that have contributed a lot over the years uh, to this project. So it has very strong foundations. And, and after the mainnet launch earlier this year, now we are seeing a lot of developer traction on top as well, which is, which is obviously very exciting. If you want to learn more, you can go to uh, stacks.co. Thank you so much. Yes, so uh, it's technically not a sidechain. Uh, it, it basically, because it has such a unique design, uh, sometimes I call it layer uh, 1.5. It, it has certain properties of a layer one blockchain and it has certain aspects of a L2 on Bitcoin. But uh, if you really get into the technical details, the answer is it's neither, right? It's not a side chain, it's not an L2. Uh, for people who want to uh, learn more about this, there's a really good blog post on stacks.org uh, that basically gets into how it's different from a side chain, how it's different from an L2. But the short answer is this, it's closer to a L1 blockchain. Sometimes I call it a layer 1.5, if, if, if that makes sense. Yes, so I think uh, the Taproot uh, upgrade is very interesting. I'm very supportive of it. Uh, what it basically does is uh, it does two things. Uh, one is that it makes certain uh, Bitcoin transactions uh, effectively smaller or more efficient in size on the Bitcoin chain. And the second thing it does is that it makes certain more complicated Bitcoin transactions uh, more private. So that it's harder to differentiate between those complicated transactions and the normal Bitcoin transactions that you do. Taproot itself doesn't really enable uh, smart contracts directly. What it opens the doors to is that people can do, uh, people can use Bitcoin script or other types of capabilities that were there even before Stacks. They can use that, uh, they can do that in a more efficient manner. So I think the, the critical thing to understand is the type of approaches that are there without Stacks, they're always limited by Bitcoin script. And Bitcoin script is a fairly limited scripting language. Right. So the type of uh, approaches that are there, they could be DLCs or uh, approaches like RGB in the, in the, in the Lightning world. Uh, these are mostly off-chain smart contracts. They require a lot of coordination off-chain and they're fairly limited in, in several ways as well. What SACS does is that it gives you Ethereum style full smart contracts, meaning that you can build automated market makers, uh, liquidity protocol, anything that you're seeing on modern blockchain like Solana, Avalanche, you can do that in the Bitcoin ecosystem and which was simply not possible before and it wouldn't be possible uh, even with the Taproot upgrade. Yeah, 
Yes. So I think uh, I agree that there are, there's a lot of developer activity and traction uh, in the Ethereum ecosystem. But if you look at even recent examples like ecosystems like Solana, for example, uh, within like six to nine months, uh, they were able to not only grow the smart contract uh, activity on a new blockchain, but it was also not based on EVM. It's, they don't use the Solidity language. They actually use Rust. So it's a, it's a completely kind of like a separate type of an ecosystem that we saw grow fairly quickly over six to nine months. Whereas with Stacks, uh, we're not starting from scratch. We're not actually starting a new ecosystem. We're actually tapping into an existing ecosystem that is very large. Uh, Bitcoin already has network effects. Bitcoin already has a brand name. It has a trillion dollar market cap. So when you launch something for the Bitcoin audience, they already have capital. They already have Bitcoin and they can actually more easily deploy their capital into smart contracts and so on. So I would even say that even if you were starting a separate ecosystem like Solana or Avalanche, you have a fairly good chance of getting traction. But if you're starting it in an, in an existing ecosystem that is very large like Bitcoin, uh, your chances only become uh, even better. Yes, and I think the 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 key thing to understand over there is that in, in these designs, there are always trade-offs. And maybe sometimes uh, in marketing language, people don't make their trade-offs very explicit. So we, we want to design a system where, again, you know, following the ethos of Bitcoin, that is very much optimized for decentralization and independent verification. Meaning just like Bitcoin, uh, anyone, anyone can independently verify the Stacks blockchain. And just like Bitcoin, anyone can run a node. Uh, the other end of the spectrum is where you can basically uh, close down your system. So it's permit, it, you, not anyone can be a miner. And you can require people to effectively own data centers to run a node. If you do that, you can actually gain on speed, but then you will score very low on decentralization. So the approach that we are taking is that the main Stacks blockchain, the thing that is live today, uh, it optimizes for decentralization like Bitcoin. And it, it has, let's say, speed comparable to Ethereum, right? But the scalability solutions, which I call subnets, uh, very explicitly give you faster speed and low transaction costs. And then this score a little bit lower on decentralization, just like the other solutions out there do, but they probably don't admit it that, that uh, transparently. So we wanna be very transparent about on the main stack chain, uh, it is high decentralization and maybe, maybe uh, lower speeds, but on the subnets, it could be very fast uh, transactions and very low cost. And maybe we are more upfront about the decent underlying decentralization property. So we wanna give the trade-offs to the developers, uh, then which one do you, you want to develop your application on and then just connect the two together versus hiding behind marketing hype and trying to pretend to be more decentralized than you're actually not because it's always a trade-off. If you're gaining one thing, you're always losing something and you need to be more upfront and more honest about uh, those trade-offs.